Facebook. Some of you on Zoom, this good morning. I pray that as the Spirit gave me utterance, that every heart will be blessed this morning. But before I go into the Word, give me a tune here. I have a little song to sing. Praise God. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who God the Father, God the Son, and God the sweet Holy Spirit. I see that the um, title of my message has been already publicized this morning, praise God, in the covering of the, uh, the, the, uh, the program, praise God. Um, yes, the title of my message is, For My Grace is Sufficient. Say to yourself that God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. And when we think about grace, we think about the unmerited love that God shows to sinful people. He expresses this love through the sacrificial death of his son. And it becomes ours when we receive Jesus Christ as our savior. Because of grace, we are forgiven by God and adopted into his family. Think about grace before we were born. When we were dead in our trespasses and sin, this means that we were born with no spiritual life. We were numb to the things of God. Our nature leans away from the Lord and instead towards ourselves and the way of the world. We can read Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 5, and you'll get more in depth about that. We want to talk to us about Job. And the reason why I chose Job is because Job was a spiritual man. He was a man that loved God. As the word of God said, he feared God. And if you will just turn to me in your Bibles and we will read, I will just go through briefly chapter one and two, then I'll move on to 
the designated chapter, which is chapter 23. He says that there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and extruded evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. And moving down to the fifth earth, and it was so when the day of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually move down to chapter verse 13 and he said, and there was a day when his his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and there came a messenger unto job and said the oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them and the sabian fell upon them and took them away yea they have slain the servant with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped alone to tell thee I'll jump down to the end in here, verse 19 says, And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And the second chapter is something what's similar to the first, but the thing that struck me in the second chapter is the verse nine that's the uh verse nine then said his wife unto him but thou still re retain thine integrity curse god and die but he said unto her thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speaketh what Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. And we have here a man that loved God, that fear him. Could you imagine? Put yourself in Job's shoe for one second. You are wealthy. You, you have wealth. You have everything that you had desire and in an instant you lose everything but you still remain humble in chapter one he says he worshiped god and he said naked came i out of my mother's womb and that's how i'm going to remain that's how i'm going to go back but he cursed he did not curse god he rebuked his wife when she said, curse God, I'm dying. She said to him, are you going to still maintain that integrity, both you are Christian? And sometimes we are going through things in life and, and people will say, oh, my way don't give up. You say you're a Christian. If you were a Christian, why did God allow this to happen to you? And why did you have to go through this? But I'm here to tell us this morning that his grace is sufficient for us. Hallelujah. We have to go to this town. We are not alone. Hallelujah. In all that Job went through, hallelujah, he did not curse God. He worshipped the Lord instead. He gave him praise. Some of us are going through our our difficulties this morning. Some of us are going through our rough seas this morning, but I'm here to say that God's grace is sufficient for us. Hallelujah. 
His grace is sufficient for me, hallelujah, because his grace and mercy have brought me through. I'm living this moment because of the grace of God this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, blessed be God. And if you continue in the book of Job, the third chapter, and go on, you find that he cursed. He cursed, but he didn't curse God. He talked about the day he was born, the day he was conceived, and why he had to born, and why he had to go through all of this. And upon that, his friends came to see him, and when they saw him, they looked upon him. And I was like, huh? You're a righteous man. You hold yourself in God. What make you go through all of that there? And sometimes they go to our friend, the closest, the one that closest to us, eh? That the one that pull us down, that talk about us instead of encouraging us and say, hold on, knowing that our standard and sometimes you don't have anything to do. Sometimes we blame the enemy. But it's God is testing us. He's throwing us out in the waters out there. And he's sometimes, he tell us launch out, but we can't launch out because our faith is not anchored in him. But Job faith was anchored in God. That even when he lost everything that money could buy, he realized he still had something. Hallelujah. He had hope. Hope in God. Hallelujah. He had something to hold on to. He was still alive. He was still breathing breath of life, hallelujah. We may be down and out, hallelujah. We may be in a hospital bed, but as long as we are breathing the breath of life, we can still give God praise, hallelujah. We can still glorify God, hallelujah, because his grace, hallelujah, is sufficient for me, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. His grace is sufficient. His grace, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In chapter 23, hmm, Job says, he begins like this. Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with argument. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he will put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. I'm backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. I like the 10th verse. That says, but he knoweth, he knoweth. He knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth. When he had tried me, when he done put me to the fire, I am going to come out, hallelujah. I'm going to show up and show off my God, hallelujah. I am going to come forth as gold, hallelujah. I am going to come forth as gold, pure gold, good gold, hallelujah, hallelujah. He says here at the left first, he says, my foot had held his steps. His ways have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job held on in spite of what he was going through. He didn't turn to the left or turn to the right. He stayed Focus, focus on God because God is the only one that could deliver him, that could bring him through, that could deliver him out of all that he was going through. He held on. He said, I, 
neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. So that means he was feasted upon the word of God. He was comforting himself in what God said, the commandment of, what, of God. And so there were times we go through life, but we need to block out the naysayers and all the noise that is around us and focus on what God is saying to us. Too many times we magnify our situation and we put God in a little box. No, here God, Job magnified God. His situation, even though it was gross, it was grave, it was heavy. He didn't magnify that. He magnified God. He said, I did not deter from his word. I continue my meditation. I continue seeking his faith. I continue believing in God. I continue trusting him because at the end of the day, he is the only one that will help me. He is the only one that will bring me out of what I am going through. Hallelujah. God is the only one that can bring us out. He is our deliverer. Hallelujah. He is our deliverer. Praise God. And so when you think about it, Job continue. And in the end, in the chapter 42nd chapter of God said, watch it. Job, I wanted to do something. He rebuked his friends then because he said, you did not represent me well. You went and you said things that I didn't tell you to say. But get these bullocks and God offered them. And Job, you pray for them. And so Job went. Why? Because God's grace was sufficient and Job knew who he served. He knew whom he believed and he was persuaded that he was able to keep that which he had committed unto him. And so Job continued. We have brother Paul here, and we know who Paul was. Paul, we know who Paul was. Paul was a persecutor. Paul was somebody who think that, okay, with his religious belief was the truth, and then you, as we as Christian, what we were saying was, you know, was not lining up to God's standard. And he went about persecuting the church, persecuting the Christian. Think about him. Saul was his name. He was later known as Paul after his encountering with grace. He was very religious. He was blinded to God's perspective and plan. He opposed those who followed Christ, according to Acts 26, 9 to 11. With his goal of destroying the church, he sought to eradicate the Christian faith, which he deemed false. He was on his way to persecute believers when he had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. After his encounter with Jesus, he surrendered his will to the Lord and became a true follower of Jesus Christ. How many of us know that once we have an encounter with God, we can never be the same again. Amen. Once we have tasted and seen the goodness of God, we will never, never be the same again. And so Job, Job not Job, sorry, praise God. Paul, he had an encounter. And he experienced Jesus. And he became a force to be reckoned with. Think about it. Of all that he had done, God forgave him and accepted him. And he said, I'm, I'm going to make you a vessel up to honor me and so he went on business for the king and in the 12th chapter of second corinthian and the ninth verse he says let me read from the eight for this thing i besought the lord thrice back up no ring verse seven unless i should be exalted above measure 
Through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Now, he didn't tell us what the thorn in the flesh was, but he was going to something. There are critics that says, you know, it was an eye problem, you know, he had some sort of disease or anything, but God knows what he was going to. He was being tested and he was being tried by God. Sometimes we have, he put us through that fire. Think about Job, he put Job to the fire, right? He put Job to that, he, he said to the enemy, go ahead, cause Satan presented himself on that day. And he said, you, you think Job is serving you for not? You have a hedge of protection on, on Job. What do you think? Because of the protection, Job can praise you. But God says, okay, I am going to remove it, but don't touch your life. And he removed it. And he touched everything that he owned, he possessed, he touched everything. But instead of cursing God, what the enemy expected or thought would have happened, didn't happen, the opposite happened. So he went through, and here God was testing Job's faith. And here in Paul's situation, he's testing what Paul, knowing where Paul come from. And what Paul's behavior was like before he had that encounter with Jesus. And so he said there was this thorn in his flesh, and whatever he was going through, it was more than he can take. He said, for this I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace, my grace, God's grace is sufficient for me. His strength is made perfect when I am weak, then I am strong because I'm standing, hallelujah, on the promises of God, hallelujah. He said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So I am going through. I am going through. It doesn't matter because I know when I'm weak, the Lord is my light on my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life hallelujah once we get once we stand upon the word of god once we believe that god is our light and our salvation he is the strength of our life he is our refuge and our fortress our very present help in trouble we know that we are not alone hallelujah because we have behind us first our heavenly father on the need of us is the everlasting arms of god this morning hallelujah hallelujah praise god you may be going through the rough seas this morning you may be going to tribulation and some trial but his grace is sufficient for his strength is made perfect when you are weak when you are down and out and the doctor says i don't know what's happening i don't know i cannot understand my god is saying my grace is sufficient my strength is gonna bring you up i am gonna help you i am gonna uphold you with that right hand of my right righteousness i got you this morning don't have to worry because god grace hallelujah is sufficient for us his grace hallelujah his grace and mercy has brought us through we are living this moment because of you we are gonna stand up and praise him too for your grace god your grace hallelujah has brought us through hallelujah hallelujah 
His strength is made perfect in my weakness. God's strength is made perfect when we are weak. When we are down and out, we just have to look to God and say, God, I don't have no strength. Think about Jehoshaphat when he was going through, when the great multitude came upon him in 2 Chronicles and the 20th chapter. He said, God, I don't have the might to go with this great multitude, but my eyes are upon you. Hallelujah. And so God, a word came to him, to the prophet and says, God says, stand still and see my salvation for the battle is not yours but the battle is the Lord this morning how many of us are going to whatever your battle is this morning God is saying the battle is not yours turn it over to Jesus turn it over to Jesus turn it over to Jesus hallelujah put your hands in God's hand put your circumstances in God's hand put your situation in God's hand and he will work it out for you better than you expected better than any, than any financial advisor can do it better than any doctor can do better than anyone can do it God is going to turn it around God is going to turn it around he has turned it around before for us this morning he has turned it around for us before and he will do it again just look at where you are now <laughs> and where you have been haven't he always come true hallelujah for you he's the same god he never changed he never changed he never changed hallelujah his grace <laughs> your grace your grace hallelujah your grace mighty god is sufficient for me your strength is made perfect in my weakness when i'm done when i go through the persecution when i feel all alone hallelujah your grace is there your word is a reminder to me your word the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pasture he leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He said, even though I go to the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for he is with me. His rod and his staff, it comfort me. Hallelujah. Just think about it. God's grace. God's grace. Sometimes we allow ourselves to be defeated. To be defeated. Why? Because we do not trust in God. We don't really fully trust in God. We trust, we listen to what people are saying. And instead of what God is saying. And then we get to the place and we say, it's true, you know. And sometimes we fall away from that. Instead of staying focused on God. Things was happening in Job's life. But he didn't fall away. His wife told me to curse God and die, but he rebuked her. And there were times that we had to rebuke those bad influences that come in and telling us all kind of things. When we know that Christ is our rock, Christ is who sustaining us. Christ, I mean, my husband didn't put the breath in my body this morning. Father God, wake me up this morning and give me that breath. He said, I am going to give you my breath. The ear that I'm breathing is God this morning. And so I owe it all to him. My life, my being, I owe it all to him. And so this morning, and I'm encouraging us, whatever the situation may be, whatever the circumstances may be, we can't fix it. But we can Trust God. God allows various kinds of suffering to help us to mature in faith and become more like Jesus. Titus 2, 11 to 14 tells us, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodly and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of great of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who had who gave himself for us 
that he might redeem us from all iniquities and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good work. Too often we let our circumstances determine our behavior. And when things are going smooth, we feel good. But we let us start experiencing some hard times, problems now. We don't know what to do. We become confused. We shouldn't come confused when we're going through anything. Because if we know God, if we say that we belong to God, we shouldn't come confused. Jehoshaphat, the coin come confused, you know, when he see the multitude. Because he was like, my goodness, three of them, all of them coming up against us, Lord, problems here now. But what Jehoshaphat did, he encouraged himself. He lift up his eyes and he said, Lord, I don't have any might. I don't have strength to go with this. This is a great multitude, but my eyes are upon you. And he leave it there. He leave it there. And the word of God tells us that he came to him. God heard that. God heard that prayer. You know? And he came and he answered. And the, the prophet came and he said, God said, he afforded he prayer. But the battle is not yours. It is mine. So don't let the storms of life confuse us. Don't let um, bring us down. Sometimes you may say it's easy to say, but it's easy to do too. If you believe in prayer, it don't have to be any long prayer. Just simple, God have mercy upon me. I need your help now. Because he already know what you're going through. He already know what you're going through. So you don't have to be in a long prayer of all that you're going through. Jehoshaphat didn't send a long prayer. He said, God, I don't have no might to go with this great multitude, but my eyes are upon you. And God heard him. And the answer came. The answer came. And he delivered him. He said, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. And he set everything. He set everything in order. He said, go down tomorrow beside the cliff this. And stand still and see the salvation of God. And sometimes God is just telling us to stand still. Stand still and see God fight for us. Where are we going to fight? How are we going to fight? On our knees. Go to God in prayer. And cry out to him. Empty yourself before him. And he will give you the answer openly according to the gospel of matthews i think it's the seventh chapter he said that when you pray enter into your closet and pray to your father that is in secret and your father that see it in secret shall reward you openly so when you pray nobody can see you when you're praying but they can see when god bring you out hallelujah god is gonna bring you out with a high hand he tell Job, he said, Job said, I love the Lord so much that it didn't matter what he was putting me through. I was going through. I stayed focused upon his word. I meditate upon it. His word was more important to me than the food, the natural food that I eat. He tell Paul, go through. You got to suffer sometimes. We got to suffer. When we think about what Jesus went through for us, it's nothing to compare with what we are going through. But the beauty about it, we have somebody that is dear to see us through because we are not alone. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always so as we close here let us remember that the reason for adversity is to keep us humble and the lord was revealing astounding truth to paul 
and he could not afford to become prideful. So whenever he will have reason for fleshly confidence, God will remind him on how dependent he was upon the Lord. Brokenness is God's requirement for maximum usefulness. This is because when we are truly broken or helpless and without resources that we look to God and count on his provision, his power help us to be victorious and all the glory must be unto him. Job said, my feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his ways without turning aside. I have not departed from the command of his lips. I treasure the word of his mouth more than my daily bread. He stand alone and who can oppose him? He does whatever he please. So in spite of what, these are two men that God used. And he is, he's using us in ways, you know, and we all can testify that God is using us. But according to the 23rd Psalms, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. The Lord is my shepherd. He is my shepherd. He is with us. His grace is sufficient for us. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. There may be a soul here today uh, on Zoom that you are going through something. It may be too much for you to bear. Sometimes you may feel, you know, nobody's listening. Nobody is hearing you. But God is, is open. He said his ears is not too heavy that he cannot hear. Neither his hands shorten that he cannot save. But if we tell it to Jesus, we know that he's going to hear us. We know that he will give us the strength to endure. He's going to carry us through. You may be sick. You may be going through financial problems. Whatever the situation is, God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is sufficient. His strength is made perfect in weakness. You may be saved already, but you just need a touch. Sometimes we need to be encouraged in the Lord. We need to be renewed daily. Every day of our life, we need to be renewed to be restored. If that is you, you can come to the altar. Dr. Womble will gladly pray for you and with you. For those of you on Zoom, you can just stretch your hand to the screen. Because prayer knows no distance. The centurion says, speak the word and my servant will be healed. For those of you who just need prayer for God to sustain you, you may come just as you are. Just come. He's waiting with outstretched arms. There are times we look upon others, you know, and think about what people are going to say when I step out. No, forget people. <laughs> we need help. And when you need help, you need God. Because God is the only one who can help us. Praise God. Sometimes the same people that is talking and tell you other things, they can't offer help. But God is saying today, my grace, my grace is sufficient. My grace, God's grace is sufficient for us this morning. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. You just have to believe, hallelujah, that God's grace is going to keep us. His grace is going to see us through. It doesn't matter what our situation is. 
God's grace got us this morning. Reverend Wamble, praise God. If you will just pray for these souls, praise God. <laughs>